Hello everyone, my name is Matthew David and in this video I'm going to be demonstrating the new update for my tool called Loader. Um, in this update I've added process hollowing to my tool which was done in response to some of the testing that myself and some others did with the previous versions and we were noticing that on certain systems the payload was still getting detected uh, particularly when using it with Meterpreter. Um, so I hope you'll see that in this video, the process hollowing update should help address this issue as I'll be demonstrating it on both a Windows Server 2019 machine and a Windows 10 PC using both um, Interpreter and Cobalt Strike. So without further ado, right now you can see I'm looking at the GitHub repository for the tool. And if you check out the latest commit, you'll see that it's version 1.3 and that I'm now using process hollowing, like I said, and I've added a few more syscalls. Um, if you're interested in learning more about how the process hollowing that I'm using in the tool works, I highly recommend checking out Snow Crash's Nim Hollow page, uh, which is also on GitHub. Um, this tool I've learned so much from, I essentially just looked at his source code and then converted it over to C++ so that I could use it uh, in my own tool. But I definitely thank him a lot for posting this as I wouldn't have been able to do it without it. Um, and you can even check out his README and see that he provides some slides that have some really great annotations um, that explain exactly how the technique works. Um, so I highly recommend checking that out if you're interested. So let's get back to the demo by going to my uh, GitHub page and selecting the link that we can use to clone the repo, which I will do on my Kali Linux virtual machine. And you can see that I now have all the files we need in order to use the tool. As demonstrated in uh, previous videos, I have a Python builder that you can see right here. Um, the only argument that I've changed is the tech P flag, which is new. Um, and that provides you a way to specify the process that you want to inject your shellcode into. Um, by default, it uses explorer.exe. As I've read online that um, explorer.exe does not undergo any in-memory uh, scanning by Windows Defender. I'm not sure if this is still the case as that article uh, is a few years old, but I'll leave it linked in the description. Um, but I have noticed that it does seem to work better when injecting into explorer.exe, especially when using the Cobalt Strike uh, shellcode. Um, but first we're going to be demonstrating Meterpreter. So I'm going to generate some shellcode for Meterpreter using MSF Venom as you would. As you can see, I'm using the 64-bit version and the reverse TCP variant. And I am also using my private IP address for the L host. I'm using 8080 for the port. I'm specifying that I want raw shellcode using the tag F flag, and I am saving it to the tcp.bin file. So we'll hit enter and that will generate our shellcode for us, which we can then use with our, with our uh, Python builder and give it the file that we saved as the first argument. And since we wanna test out the new flag that allows us to specify the process to inject into, we'll give it something like notepad.exe as a test and then hit enter. And then we'll get some output and see that it is confirming that we're using notepad.exe for the process hollowing and it compiled our new stub and saved it as a.exe. So now we can set up our Python HTTP listener so that we can transfer the file over to our test virtual machines, which we'll check out right now. First, we're looking at our Windows Server 2019 virtual machine, and we'll check for updates to ensure that it's fully up to date, which you can see it is. And we'll check for updates under the threat definition section to make sure the database is also up to date and we'll go to the virus and threat protection settings and ensure that real-time protection is turned on. And we'll also see that cloud delivered protection is also turned on. Only thing that's turned off is automatic sample submission and there are no exclusions listed. So now we can go to our second virtual machine, which is our Windows 10 PC. We can check for updates here to make sure that this is also fully up to date. You can see that it is. And we can go into the security intelligence section, make sure that that's also up to date, which you can see that it is. And we can go to the virus and threat protection settings and see that real-time protection is turned on, cloud delivered protection is turned on. Only thing that's turned off is automatic sample submission and there are no exclusions. 
So now that we've made sure that both of our Windows Virtual Machines are fully up to date and have their antivirus software enabled, we're gonna do one last thing in our Kali Virtual Machine to make sure we're ready to accept our Meterpreter payload, which is open up a, um, a Metasploit handler. As you can see, I already have it configured and you can type the exploit command to make sure it's listening and ready to go. So now that it is, we can go back to our first virtual machine, which is our Windows Server 2019. We can open up a PowerShell console and we can download our compiled binary and save it to the disk, just like so. You can see that that worked without uh, flagging Defender, which is great. And then we can run it just like so, and then head back over to our Kali Linux virtual machine and see that we have a interpreter session. And we can start to run some commands to make sure that they work. You can see that they work. Uh, we can try something like shell, which is more likely to get detected. And we can see that that's working with no issue. And then finally, we can run something like hash dump to ensure that even that will work. And you can see, seem to have worked. Uh, we go back, there are no flags, no detections, and our interpreter session is still alive and uh, well. So we can now exit out of it and start our handler again. And now we can head over to our other virtual machine, which is our Windows 10 PC. We can open a PowerShell terminal as administrator. Um, and we can CD into our user's home directory and download the file just as we did before. That's saved to the disk without any issue. And then we can run it. Go back to our virtual machine running Kali Linux and see that we have our interpreter session. We can now run the same exact commands that we did before. And notice that they all seem to be working without any issue. And finally run our hash dump and see that we were able to run all those commands on our Windows 10 PC without our interpreter session being detected or killed. Um, so that serves as the interpreter demo. We can exit out of it and now move over to Cobalt Strike. So we have Cobalt Strike right here, ready to go. We can select the attacks tab and then click packages, payload generator, select a listener. I'll have uh, the one I already have set up and ready to go. And then we're gonna select the raw output type and then click the box for uh, using the 64-bit payload. We'll click generate and then head over to our demo folder and then go into the folder that we cloned from GitHub and save our file as payload.bin, which we're able to do successfully. Then let's go back to our demo folder and kill our um, Python server and then do a simple ls to ensure that we do have our payload file saved there ready to go. We can now use it with our Python builder and just supply it as the first argument. And we won't be giving it the tag p flag as we do want to use explorer.exe um, for this process injection. So we'll just hit enter. You can see we get a confirmation. We did use explorer.exe by default and we have our new stub compiled as a.exe. So we can start back up our Python server and head back over to our Windows Server 2019 virtual machine and just download the file same way we did before. You can see that worked with no issue and now we can run it and head back over to our Kali Linux virtual machine and notice that we did indeed get a beacon um, back in Cobalt Strike that we can interact with and first run a really simple who am I command to make sure um, that our beacon is alive and well. And then we can run something like log on passwords to see if this would work um, without getting detected. And you can see that seemed to work with no issue. And then finally we can run, you know, another who am I command just to ensure that our beacon is still alive and was not killed by Defender. And you can see it, that worked with no issue and we did not get any flags in our Windows Server 2019 virtual machine. So now we'll head over to our Windows 10 PC 
and download our newly compiled file on here and do the same exact thing. So we downloaded it. It did not get detected when saving it to the disk. And if we now run it and head back over to our Linux virtual machine, you can see we got a new beacon that we can interact with. Run the who am I command. You can see that worked with no issue. We can run uh, Mimikatz logon passwords and see if that works. And it looked like that worked uh, without any issue. And then we can finally just run who am I command to ensure that our beacon is still alive and well. And we did get the output of that, so everything looks good. Um, so our payload was not detected also on the Windows 10 PC. Um, it could get detected occasionally. I have uh, witnessed it a few times. Um, so definitely play around with it to make sure that maybe your settings are correct. Um, and, you know, just to make sure that you're accounting for everything, including, you know, using the uh, profile that is less likely to get detected, something generated by a tool like SourcePoint. Um, also, I encourage you to use the sleep mask for Cobalt Strike. Um, that helps with in-memory scanning. Um, but yeah, as you can see, both Meterpreter and Cobalt Strike were able to run on both of the Windows virtual machines uh, without getting detected. And we were able to use all of the features of them um, without our uh, payloads getting uh, killed. So finally, the last thing I'm going to do is go over to a antivirus scanner and click the browse button and just select um, go to our demo folder real quick and go into our shitloader folder and then select the file that we just generated for cobalt strike and upload it real quick so that we can see um, if it's detected on any of the antivirus solutions that they have on this system And you see here that we have zero out of 26 detections and none of these antivirus software uh, were able to detect the stub that we compiled. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, this will be the last update, I think, for a while. Um, I will be making more updates to uh, make the process hollowing uh, technique a little bit more robust and make it work better with stageless payloads as it doesn't really work with those right now. Um, but definitely stay tuned. Uh, there will be further updates in the future. And I'll also be um, releasing a lot more videos uh, in the Four Skids TV series, um, as that will be the next thing I'm working on. So I definitely appreciate it and stay tuned. Thanks.